What's going on YouTube? Chris here. Want to bring y'all an update today. Bitcoin. We're going to be looking at Bitcoin on the one week chart. And right now we're sitting at 8,481. We're down 0.54%. What I want to talk to you about today and what you must know for Bitcoin, in my opinion, we're going to be starting on the one week time frame, and then we're going to get into the one day, then even into the four hours. So we're really going to take a detailed look at Bitcoin right now because we're sitting in a sticky situation for Bitcoin. And I think a lot of other people, including myself, are sitting back waiting to see which way the market is going to break here because there's some important areas that we're hitting. And the first one that I want to start talking about here was the 50 week moving average. Remember this on the one week time frame here. And what we need to see is a close up above that 50. We do not want to start dropping back below that. Once we finally closed up above it, it was January 6th. 2020 so since january 6th we've been trading up above that and if we start having candle closes weekly candle closes below that that will show the bears that they're in control and they're going to be able to take out more positions to continue to short this to the downside so that's just something an area that i would really watch because typically when we close up above it we have a nice little run just like you saw here we had this candle close at 8,000. we ended up going all the way up to about 10,500. that was a nice little move there over here when we closed up above it we were at 5737 and we wicked all the way up into 14000 so when people say these things aren't significant i would disagree i think you can really learn a lot and you can also focus on your entries and exits with moving averages i think that's a really good way to do it but we have to pay attention to this area now and see if today we close up above that that's one thing that i'm looking for and what you can see up here we had a spinning top candle we had a doji candle we had a lot of fight between the bulls and the bears at this area so if the bulls are going to step back in they need to step back in at this area in my opinion so that we can come up and try to get over top of that 10,192 we need to start setting those higher highs and higher lows again that's what's going to be so important so that's on the one week time frame I want to go into the one day now with you and on the one day we're gonna have a little bit more detail here and what I want to talk about is trend lines trend lines in my opinion from the one hour all the way up to the one week they can be so significant trend line breaks they can be everything in this space and the trend line that I'm paying a lot of attention to is right here in white so as you can see here, this trend line, we had a big air pocket here, that big gap. So if we have a big gap like that and we're able to hold this area and we actually get a bounce off this area, that'll show that this trend line is extremely strong. Okay, so that's something that I'm looking for right now is to see if we have candle closes today above or below this white trend line here. And for the exact penetration, what you want to look for to the downside, if we are to have candle close, you want to look for about 3 to 5% below that trend line and then that most likely would be a sell signal for you because what we're also dealing with right now which is the tough thing is we had our golden cross but now the 200 moving average and the 50 is going to act as overhead resistance for us and the fact that we've had all this fight around this 200 and this trend line you can see we're having this squeezing effect and we're waiting to see if we're going to snap to the upside here and start challenging that 50 moving average around we'll call it 9200 9300 that area right there or if we're going to start breaking down lower to some of these areas that i have support at here at 8254 that's going to be important so this is a hotbed area and why i said we're in this sticky situation right now are we going to have a trend line break to the downside or are we going to start closing up above this 200 day moving average again you know so those are the things I'm looking at. Are we going to find support if we do drop down at 8,254? We typically know that if you have a trend line break, you can fall pretty hard pretty fast. So that's something that you really want to look at. And also the volume has been changing. And I wanted to point this out to you. So when you're in an uptrend here, you can see the larger stick of volume. Whenever you pump, volume increases. And then as you cool down, the volume's typically lower. Over here, we pumped again. And then the volumes lower as the market breathes. Same deal. We pumped again here, large stick of volume. The market breathed, the volume dried up. Now what you're seeing is the opposite. So we're having that sell off on heavier volume in our reactions. We're having less volume, just like this one here. We drop down heavy on big volume. Here's our reaction bounce that we had on lighter volume. So this is showing a downtrend now. And then we just had this big wave sell off here on heavier volume. And then we had what tried to be a doji candle to protect this 200 day moving average. It didn't pan out the most, but that was a very weak little reaction there. We didn't even see much of a bounce here. So that's where I'm looking at, I'm saying, okay, we are getting into those oversold territories. We fell very hard, very fast and aggressively. We're sitting on this trend line. Are the bulls gonna step in right now or not? That's what I'm watching to see. 
And in my opinion, they should step in in this area. We've had a pretty decent retracement overall. I'm not saying they're gonna, guys, by any type of stretch of the imagination. This market has a mind of its own, just like this area over here. Look, we had this massive fall. We moved sideways for you know a, a month, three weeks, somewhere in that range. Then we had a massive dump down, and look what happened. Look what the whales did. So the manip and then that, right after that, look at this huge dump. So the manipulation is very real in this space. But in terms of using the technicals, we're in that sticky spot. Are we going to have a trend line break? Are we going to get back up above the moving averages? The moving averages are now acting as overhead resistance, but we had a golden cross. I mean, these are strange things that are taking place, and they're all happening together. And then also, will you know, if we break down, is it going to be a massive breakdown? Or since we've already fallen so far, will we break down and then back test this trend line? So these are all the scenarios that I'm looking. And what I wrote down today with you guys is watch the trend line. Talk about the golden cross. On the four hour, we're going to get into it. We had a death cross of the 50 and the 200. Uh, the head and shoulders top. So basically, you know, this almost looks like that left shoulder. And then we had a head, then a sloppy right shoulder over here that kind of faded off for a double right shoulder. You can see it a little bit more on the four hour time frame. But, you know, this was almost that topping area here. So that's where we need to find if we're going to get that nice, strong support where we can start challenging these areas again here. Because this is a big sell off. If you take a look at this percentage wise, so from the 10,500 we made it up to down to where we're at now, that's a 20% sell off. That's a huge move. So, you know, we're due for some type of reaction, but, you know, everything in Bitcoin's an overreaction. And that's something we have to pay attention to. I want to talk with you about the volume and then also here on the one day chart. Let's take a look at the stochastic RSI. And if you guys get some from these videos, if you like me covering this, being honest with you, just giving you my opinion, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Happy Sunday to you, and let me know down low what you're doing. So as we're looking at the stock here, as we know, typically it can stay pegged out for over a month down in oversold territory. That's just something we have to deal with here. And that's basically where we've been now. We've been in that oversold territory since the 17th of February and we're at March 1st now. So, you know, we spent some time down here. We're due for some type of bounce. It does not always just stay down here. Can it stay down there for a month or more? It can, but typically guys, anytime we're down in this area, we will start to get some type of move or reaction back to the upside. And I just want to see what type of move that is. Is it going to be another weak one where we set a lower high than what we've had here? And then we're definitely going to be for sure in that downtrend channel. Or is this just a really deep retracement before we make that next large pump to the upside? That's what I'm trying to deal with right now and why I'm watching this so closely. Because we do have these things like this oversold stock. And then if we look at the RSI for it, we're at 34 right now. So we're not into that oversold territory and we know we can get extremely low. Back in here, we've been at 19, we've been at 8 before. So the RSI could definitely go lower. You could even draw a little trend line on that one. Right there, you could draw a trend line and just see when you get that trend line break. That's something that I like to do is RSI trend line breaks as well. And then we'll get into our four hour time frame. Excuse me here. We'll go to the four. All right. So with the four hour now, you can see this a little bit more clear. It's almost like a rounded top. You can kind of see how the supply and demand has changed there. And then also look at these big cells, this big cell pressure. Those are your waves right there and then here's our reaction and look not a lot of volume so that's what's making me a little bit nervous here because we're having the characteristics now of almost moving in from that short term to intermediate term downtrend and that could start anywhere past about three weeks so so we're still it's very short and aggressive but we're still in the short term downtrend and it's trying to move into an intermediate term and we don't want that to happen we want it to get moving to the upside but as you can see here we had our death cross right here and that pushed us hard to the downside and guys, I'm telling you, this stuff with, with technical analysis works. Look back here. When we had our golden cross, it was at $7,200. It ran us all the way up through, and now we're having that death cross. So this is definitely something to pay attention to on the four-hour time frame, as well as this trend line right here, and then this support of 8254 You know, guys, this is just where I've always talked about it, and I've emphasized it. I've started in this market. I was a hodler. Okay? I got in as an investment, and... 
as I started, you know, just seeing because I got in in early 2017, 2018, that bear market hit. And I'm thinking to myself, what in the world's going on? Because I'd never been in the markets before. I'm a younger guy. I'd done stuff, you know, like Craigslist. I'd always buy and sell things, just flipping things like that. But then I saw this opportunity with cryptocurrency. And once I started to be able to read candlesticks and study and look at trend lines and how reliable these sources are and you can put the odds in your favor, then I said, why in the world would I sit through a downtrend of three years or two years or whatever it could be? I mean, you look at it, guys, people who've hodled, they've been hodling for years, and that's tying up your, your capital when you could be making trades and you can be positive. You know, and to be honest with you guys, just like I did with my Bitcoin taxes video, to me, it was worth paying the capital gains and doing the trading as opposed to sitting in losing positions and just saying, OK, I hope that it's going to do something today when the trend was clearly down. So I'm glad I got into trading, and that's why I'm trying to help you all. The best that I can. You got to watch these things. You need to watch moving averages. You need to watch Fibonacci levels, trend lines, volume, what's taking place with that volume, you know, the sentiment of the market, all that type of stuff, and factor it in. And you know, guys, you're going to be right and you're going to be wrong. But the thing is, you don't have to have a 100% trading rate to be successful. So when I was going back through and I did my trading rate, I was sitting between, depending on which exchanges I was on, I was sitting between the 68 and the 72% win rate. And that's what I'm trying to do is get the best win rate percentage that I can. And then when I'm wrong or the market goes against me, I want to cut my losses as soon as possible. And that's why, like I said, guys, I'm still a baby in all this as well. I'm trying to learn trading and, and understand this stuff. But that's why I started this channel is to take people along with me for this journey of learning all this so if you've got some from this and you, you've learned from this and I've helped you you know let me know down low because what I want to help people do sometimes is you know maybe save them some money a time when you're gonna FOMO in at the top and I say ah you know the markets getting a little shaky here or there like that type of stuff is where I want to help you I'm never gonna tell you when to put your money in or out of the market because everybody trades on different time frames some people are long-term investors some people are scalpers where I like to sit in for cryptocurrency is short-term trading where I'm holding a position a few days to swing trading that's where I think the best sweet spots to be for cryptocurrency because the moves are so volatile you know look at these moves guys they're massive and then you have those big retracements so that's what I wanted to bring out you know just come on here today and just tell you just be calm just watch these things and really see what happens but you know we're in a sticky spot right now we're just gonna have to see if the bulls step up in this area if they don't then the bears are gonna be in full control and they're just gonna be riding us down and they'll most likely be shorting off this 50 or this 200 if we do get some type of nice reaction so just be careful guys God bless you all Take care.